Having blocks and making them are the first steps in using blocks. The next step will be inserting them into your drawing. To do this, use the insert command. Pick the block that you want to use from the current file. If it's not here or you don't have any, then you have to browse to the folder where the file is located. Just click on the browse button. Find your folder. Pick the block. Click open. And then you have a few options. Now you can also insert any DWG file as a block. In fact, a block that's been saved externally or been imported out of a file is just saved as a .dwg file. AutoCAD doesn't see them as being different. And a block is essentially a DWG file that's been saved inside another DWG file. So they go hand in hand. Now the insert window here allows you to do a few things to your block upon inserting it. You can give it a specific coordinate to insert into, or you can just pick it on screen. The majority of the time, you're going to want to just specify it on screen. Your scale is a scale factor. Now your block is drawn so big, so whatever it is, if it needs to be bigger or smaller, you can change the scale here in X, Y, and Z. In AutoCAD LT, you don't have the Z options. Now you can specify the scale on screen if you'd like. You can put it in right here, or you can make them all uniform. But typically, you're going to only want to insert it at the scale of 1. That's going to put it in the exact same size that it was drawn at. Now, if you want to insert a block that's been drawn in inches, but you're working in feet or millimeters, that's okay. AutoCAD is smart. It knows that it needs to convert that as long as you've given it the proper information. So as long as the block or the file you're inserting was set up with a proper block unit insertion setting, you know, the chair was drawn in inches, and so it was set to inches. Our drawing here is set to inches, so everything's good. It's going to scale it with a factor of 1, meaning it's not going to scale it. Now you can also rotate it if you want, and that's okay. So let's insert this block, and I'm going to just keep everything the way it is, except that I'm going to specify on the screen where I want the block to go. Now I click OK to insert, and now I can put my chair wherever I want. And there we go. It's that simple. Let's try it again. Insert, scale, uniform scale, and if you leave your scale on, meaning if you specify it on screen, then you'll have the options to do that. You pick your point, and then it will ask you your scale factor. Now as I drag my mouse around, it scales up or down. I can type in 2, and it will insert it twice as big. Now we have a regular chair and a big chair. Now it's a normal practice to use the coordinates of 0, 0, as a reference point for a lot of different things. Site plans, architectural drawings, surveys, etc. Inserting a title block and other items at 0, 0 is also a common practice, especially when you're working in paper space. And when you create your block, keep in mind that every block's insertion point is located at 0, 0 of that individual block. Also, once inserted, a block can be copied, moved, rotated, etc., just like any other object. Now let's see what would happen if our units were set differently. Right now we're set to inches. Let's set them to feet. Click OK. And we've inserted these already in inches, and they're 2 feet by 2 feet. This one is 4 feet by 4 feet. But now that AutoGAD thinks that our insertion units are in feet, what's going to happen? Let's insert the exact same block, and now we see the scale factor of 0 0.0833, or it's a factor of 12. Let's turn the Specify on screen off for the scale. Click OK. There it is. Really tiny. Because it thinks the 24 units here, 24 inches long, it's actually 24 feet. So it scaled it automatically. So if something comes in too big or too small, it happens. You can just scale it to the proper size that it needs to be once you insert it. Or you can go back to the original file or block and fix the insertion units. You do that by going to Units, Enter, and picking on what they need to be. You do the same thing in the block file. Now if you go to Insert a Block, 
and you browse to it to find the block. We'll say chair, open, and our chair block is already here. If that's the case, then it will ask you this prompt. It will say, do you want to redefine the block or you want to use the one that's already in your file? It's a very good question and a very important one to pay attention to and to understand what you're trying to do. Here's the case. If I redefine the block, then it's going to redraw all of the instances of my block in my file to match the new one that I'm inserting now. If I click don't refine chair, then it's going to just insert a copy of the chair block that's already in my file. Now in this case, the line work is identical. But let's open it up, just like you would any other file, and let's change it. Just something simple, use the stretch command, and let's make it very obvious that it's different. Click Save. Now here's a trick that you can use. If you hold down the Control and Tab key, it will toggle to another file that you have currently open. You can do that very quickly. So now I'm in my other drawing. Let's use the Insert command again. Browse to the chair file. This is what it's going to look like. It's my preview. It doesn't look like this. Click Open, now click Insert, and let's redefine the block. See, the other three instances of my block were updated, and now I'm inserting the new version. Be careful with that, because you can find blocks that have the same names, like Chair. Chair is a very generic name for a block, so you probably don't want to call a block by the name of Chair. Maybe you want to call it Chair-Square or chair dash option one, something like that. Something that will define it for what it really is. That way you won't accidentally override your previously inserted chair blocks.